that are in the medical cannabis business now in Montana um, weren't in this business before. And they come from a lot of different professions, a lot of different jobs. Some were construction workers and have been out, out of work, and this is potentially a way for them to uh, make a living. Some of them are business professionals that have run businesses before, and they've looked at this as an opportunity to help, again, the patients. Well, one of the things that the Montana Medical Growers Association decided to do, we had a board meeting a little while ago, and said, you know, what we should try to do at each of our annual conferences, and I'm here to announce our next year's conference will be at the same time as this one, so everybody can plan ahead for it. It'll be one year from now. So we look forward to the changes in the next year. But one of the things that's important is there's a lot of people through the course of the time between the time that these folks have had their issues um, and the challenges that for us to even be here today. So we are going to recognize somebody else tonight kind of as in a first annual award uh, by the Montana Medical Growers Association. So what I'm going to do is just read a little bit about this person and then introduce him and we've got something for him. Uh, this individual has over 30 years of experience in the field of media and public relations, campaign and gra grassroots organizing, and government lobbying. The mass vast majority of it is Montana-based, mostly relating to controversial and technically <coughs> complex environmental and public health issues. Both in Montana and New York City, he also has created and supervised national and international publicity programs with consumer and business-to-business -business marketing objectives for corporate clients from small to Fortune 100 caliber. In 1994, he became founder, a, a founding partner in a street, strategic communications group, a helmet-based uh, campaign and issues management company. Among his other accomplishments, they created a statewide campaign that successfully reversed public opinion on a property tax ballot issue in 1994. He then has directed his strategy towards including the defeat of a 1996 anti-mining initiative that polled in March of that year where it had over 80% public support. But what really happened was in 2004, and that's why he's here tonight. He managed the strategy and the communications for the campaign in favor of an initiative that he helped write. That's Initiative 148 which set a national record in its margin of public support for a compassionate statewide medical marijuana policy. He later founded and now directs Patients and Family United, a nonprofit public education and support group for Montana medical cannabis patients and pain patients. Tom, would you please come up? Tom Dobear. sustain me every day. Uh, there's kind of an irony personal, personal for me uh, that uh, I think it was in the mid-90s I fell in love with a woman via the internet who I had never met. We didn't know anything about what we looked like or what, even what we did for a living uh, after many months of corresponding. And then she asked me what I did for a living. At the time, I was my clients were the American Plastics Council waste management for the big mining companies, and I knew her well enough to know that she wouldn't be impressed by any of that. <laughs> and, but I had to be honest, and so I was, and her immediate reaction was, you're wasting your talents. Uh, before I get finished with you, you'll be doing things like lobbying for ACLU and working to end the drug war. And I said, I'd, I'd love to, baby, but there's no money in it. <laughs> I was right about that. <laughs> and Montana isn't ready for it. I was wrong about that. Uh, and it was just a fortuitous, wonderful thing in my life that Paul Vafumo called me one day in, in February 04 and asked me to be involved in this, uh, this initiative and that the experience of getting to know patients and feel their gratitude and to see how 
this uh, horrendous national policy obstructs the fulfillment of so many people's lives and comfort. Uh, it was just, uh, it was just a, a huge awakening for me, and I'm thrilled to be part of a now growing, maturing community of people in Montana who are dedicated to defending patients' rights, fulfilling their right to use a God-given natural plant as they need in the privacy of their own homes, and to do other things to end some of the ways the drug war still obstructs uh, what's common sense for so many people. So, thanks very much. This is for Tom Dover. So thank you so much for your outstanding service to the medical cannabis community and for your patient advocacy. Montana Medical Growers Association first annual meeting and symposium 2010. <laughs> because you've had a chance to hear from him a little bit throughout the day. Maybe you've had a chance to talk to him outside. Uh, but I'm going to read what's in the program because anybody that's listening to this or, or watching it over the internet doesn't have the benefit of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just read this uh, as I introduce her. Urban Roosevelt is a senior vice president of investments at Newbridge Securities Corporation in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He also is one of four people that are provided for and used medical cannabis under a federal program established in 1983. Initially, there were 13 patients in the program, and four are still alive. Bird was diagnosed with a serious bone disorder after a baseball injury at the age of 10. I, I, I hope you'll share that story because it's a, it's a wonderful story. You shared it with us last night. Um, he is a federal patient with a very unique tie to Montana. In the 28 years he has been receiving medical cannabis, at no charge, by the way, from the federal government, there were never any studies performed on him or any of the federal patients. That was until Dr. Ethan Russo conducted the only study performed on four of the six surviving patients of the federal compassionate IND program at the University of Montana. And that is, that is really historic as well because the things that we are doing in Montana for the patients and for medical cannabis is different than any of the other states. And that's why the legislators need to look at this state uniquely as Montana, not as any other state. He's gonna to discuss tonight how he became one of the select few American citizens to have the US government actually grow and supply his medical cannabis. And why he's, on, and he's only one of four remaining federal patients under this program. He's focused his time on educating people about the benefits of medical cannabis and the lack of the studies and research that have been done, and while helping to further the use of medical cannabis both in this country and worldwide. He successfully fought the government for his right to treat himself with medical cannabis, and he's going to share his experience with us on what it's like to be a federal marijuana patient. He's also going to talk a little bit about the future necessity of hemp and why that future necessity is now not tomorrow. And his third point that he's going to address tonight is how can parents deal with children with devastating disorders. But Irv, before you start, we'd also like to come up and present a plaque to you as well. Well, I appreciate it. I pre appreciate the opportunity that Jim and Heidi and Ed and all of you have given me to come here to the great state of Montana. And what I'm hoping to be able to do is to make some rhyme and reason of what y'all have accomplished so far and to help you hope, hopefully move forward and continue all your good work. And um, appreciate uh, the, the plaque and it will be uh, prominently displayed in my office. Do you want to read it to me, Robert? Do you want me to read it? You can read it. <laughs> Irvin Rosenfeld, in recognition of your outstanding national patient advocacy, thank you for helping and including the patients of Montana in your efforts. Montana Medical Growers Association First Annual Meeting and Symposium, 2010. Thank you. 